All right, guys, I don't know if you can see me, but we're going plowing. I don't know why I signed up for plowing this year, other than the fact that they were so desperate for trucks that they offered me a bonus, sign-on bonus and all kinds of stuff, but I hate plowing. I should have said no. I got the truck warming up. All right, I don't know if you can see. We got the lights, tail lights cleared off. Clean off the strobe area, the strobe lights. Show you the lights that we gotta have, that they want us to have. That most of the time I end up shutting off because they drive me nuts. And then uh, we'll get going here. Bang off my boots. And we'll get going. you guys can see it's kind of wet snow I'm glad they called out early that was one of the complaints that they had the last couple of years is they were losing drivers because they were calling guys out <clears throat> let me unscrew this tripod a little I got a little handheld tripod um, I, I don't like to stop I, I got it in four-wheel high but when you stop, you lose your momentum, you know what I mean? Then you gotta start over with the truck. So, what they want you to do is, uh, mailbox. What they want you to do is just drive through and open up all the all of the roads on your route, like more of the main drags. Um, what, what, what this is for is basically ambulance and fire trucks, if they had to get to your house. Um, we do like the cleanup part at the end where we actually go through and clean all the intersections up and stuff like that. Um, the only thing of it is, I don't know who that is or what they're doing. We'll go down this way. I don't know if that's a town truck. It doesn't look like it's a lot of guys you get out here with the snow blower in the back of the pickup. They'll do their driveway of the customer and then they'll push the snow out into the uh, to the road. And then I come along and I have to either clean up their mess or blow it back in. See, I like to go around the cul-de-sacs and with the plow straight. Because uh, I'll show you when it gets daylight out, but when you go around a cul-de-sac like this, where you plow straight, it's actually angling the plow. So, when you go around with it angled, you're actually dragging the plow sideways and it really doesn't do anything. All right, we got some wind here. Can't, can't see much. So, that's kind of why I, I go, that's not, that's exactly why I I just put the plow straight. Because if not, you're missing half the cul-de-sac because you're dragging the plow sideways. Um, so, the reason why they um, called out, I think, early this time, earlier, is because um, they weren't getting a lot of contractors signing up for plowing because guys don't like to beat up their plows when it's heavy and wet they want to get on it and I mean this is a business you're you know I'm getting paid by the hour 
so you know if they they don't call me out and it's you know enough and I get enough hours to where I make good money not just make money then for somebody like me I just say it's not worth it and I don't sign up the next year which is what happened to me I used to have all my trucks when I had the mowing business I would plow in one this truck here my pickup my dad would plow because it was in this because it was the easiest for him and then I would plow in um, uh, one ton dump truck and then we had the skid steer out plowing after doing driveways and stuff and uh, you know it's it's a business so when they don't call you out and you don't <clears throat> make good money what you consider good money or whatever I could be out doing something else you know instead of sitting around waiting for them to call so a lot of guys didn't sign up the guys that I talked to and uh, what ended up happening was is they called me and offered me a sign-on bonus and I wasn't even going to plow this year. I didn't didn't really need to. I squirreled enough of a nut away this year to just take the winter off. Uh, and they had called and said, "Hey, you know, can you can you plow for us? We um, really need plows." And I I I, I said, I, said uh, I should mention this one o'clock in the morning, so I'm a little tired. Um, not quite awake yet I'm still in my own neighborhood they gave me route seven eight the uh, route seven route nine and route eight which is really all the other years I've plowed you've only gotten one route and uh, this year I got this year I got three routes so I I'm assuming they were definitely Yeah, I don't leave those spotlights on all the time because it kills the battery. When you're plowing it, it takes a lot, it takes a big toll on the the alternator and the charger and system and all that. I've broken down while plowing before, and you can literally see your lights start to dim. So what I did is I hooked the um all those spotlights when I'm backing up. I hooked them all up to the. Uh, back up the uh, pickup trucks back up lights I just wired them into there so they only I'll show you real quick so they only come on when I'm backing up because I don't need to be blinding people behind me so let me um let me get these roads I'm just gonna open these roads up we'll clean up later in the morning probably they'll call you and say all right because they sit in the office and they watch the radar and they'll go, okay, those storms winding down now. You can go through and clean up your, do your cleanup of your intersections and push back anything that needs to be pushed back. So I like to just do two wide passes for an ambulance to get through. <clears throat> and uh, I'll go through the whole route. I, and then I'll check back with you guys once it's light out because it's kind of dark out. All right, real quick, and then I gotta get back to work. Hydraulic hose blew because we didn't make any money plowing the last couple of years with no snow, so we didn't really take care of things that needed to be taken care of. Luckily, the auto parts store was open. I'm gonna change these two, and I'm gonna do it in the parking lot because I got tools. I'm gonna drop this, change it, and then we'll get back to work. I got the low temp fluid here and we'll check back. So I'm thinking Whoa, waves. Oh, slushy. I'm really not into snow plowing. I, I, everybody that plows around here is like, really into plowing snow, man. Yeah. Not Steve. Steve's like, <laughs> so whenever.
whenever I can have some fun, I, uh, I take it. The only thing is I'm probably gonna push the snow over here. I don't want to get caught pushing the dirty snow and stuff into the into the lake. So I think we're gonna go this way with it. Cause I don't know what the EPA says about stuff like that. This is like slush. It's slush it's like not even it's like not I got it in float but it's like not plowing good let's see what this looks like when I back up oh that's not bad all right I'll finish this parking lot check back So, interesting thing last night, tree fell on me and knocked out the mirror panel. I don't know if you call it a panel. Didn't damage it. Alright. But it just like bumped it out. It's kind of weird. So, here's, here's the thing I didn't show anybody. This is the book that they gave, they give us for a map. So like right there is the boat ramp that we were just at. Um, this is down the road. This is my street down there. And the funny thing is my house is right there. <laughs> so, They give me a whole book because um, when you're done with one route, you can just keep going to other routes. Ugh. Because they have a shortage of trucks. Let me roll up the window there. And uh, what I'm doing right now, they call slushing. They uh, want you to just kind of like push the stuff from the gutter back so like right here we're not doing nothing in the middle but look at the snow yeah we're roost roosting it right there so across the street is my street but what we're gonna do is take this out of four wheel drive, back up real quick. And we are gonna cross the town line, sandwich to Mashpee. Somebody was hungry when they named these stupid towns. What we gotta do is, is we gotta run through mash me here with the plow up and uh, around the corner here see it's like a weird shape so it goes sandwich ma uh, sandwich mash be sandwich mash be so the the town lines like zigzag so here we are again you can see the town sign up here town line now we're back in the sandwich and try to drop the plow drop the plow drop the remote Line up with the mailboxes. 
don't know if you can see that little plow guide on the end there. I'm trying to pick up the remote off the floor. Some people put out plow stakes, some some people don't. I, I try not to destroy people's yards the best I can. If they have plow stakes, it makes it so much easier because I can just go right up to the plow stakes. Dip, you know, pending that they uh, put them incorrectly. The ones on the inside, I can't stand because they smack the back of the truck. So, like, these plow stakes on the inside, see, I can't... I can't get the plow. I have to angle it over. I can't. I'd have to put the truck. See, that one there got ran over. That got ran over by the dually. See the dually marks? That's the town truck. That's the big truck. Because I, I share this route with a sander, town sander. So he'll drop he'll drop sand and salt or whatever their mixture is um, during the snowstorm and it will uh, loosen it up and uh, I'll come along and he's got a plow too but I'll come along after and you know scrape it down slush it up See, when you go around the cul-de-sac and you, you you want to be the blade straight because when you when you're turning like that it's not pushing straight it's pushing angle so that's that's the key to doing a cul-de-sac is put the blade straight as you turn you see how it's cutting to the left and then come around here and then angle it back and then cut up this road like this up this way See, the reason they want all this slush and stuff pushed back is because tonight, later on today, when it, it's supposed to freeze, and then we're supposed to get um, more snow. So, if you don't push it back far enough, what happens is the next snowstorm, you're trying to push back with a plow and you get an ice bank, you know? So, I'm going to clean up this intersection and then I'll check back with you. Alright guys, this, this intersection, not my favorite intersection. Nasty corner right here. I'll try to find a picture of it, but right here is where this pickup truck was totaled. Somebody pulled out of that driveway on me and I was traveling that way by the Cranberry Bog, which I have a video called Cranberry Bog, Bog Vlog. Um about harvesting cranberries from that bog. That, that video did terrible. <laughs> Nobody seems to care about cranberries, I guess. But if you've noticed the, uh, I don't know if I can zoom in here. If you notice the sign, this sign here has uh, cranberries on it. That's because this bog. This bog on the corner here is a pretty popular bog. People come from all over to take pictures of the sunset and crap like that. However, this corner, this very nasty corner, look at the cars come flying around. And the other side, look at. This guy put all these bushes there. I mean, what the hell would you do that for? So, I'm a little, uh, a little gun shy about this corner. Ever since my pickup truck was was totaled here. See, look it. So we're gonna leave. I'll try to put up a um, picture of my truck when it was totaled. Alright guys, here's the thing about my truck. It's very deceiving. It looks like it's not that bad, right? Well, what happened was he actually broke the center bolt on the spring. 
and the axle got shoved into the oil pan and it also shoved the tire into the fender and um, the fender into the door and a bunch of other stuff behind the headlamp was broken so the insurance company actually totaled the truck and I ended up uh, they didn't take it they just gave me a check and said yeah we don't want it so I put it back together myself all right it's a couple days after the snow my son's off to work just cleaned off his car let's look at the aftermath of plowing so a blue hydraulic line Lost all the fluid and the plow was flopping around. The cylinders I just put in there are brand new. Okay, so what had happened was is when the hydraulic line let go, it dumped all the fluid out of the reservoir and I had no way to lift the plow and I had no way to angle the plow because when you hit the snow with it, without pressure here, it just pushes that cylinder and pushes all the fluid out. So. It was in the middle of the night, um, I wanted to keep plowing because when you put money into your plow you want to get your money back so you're counting the hours plus what they pay you per hour and you're, because I plow for the town which is a total waste of time. I wasn't going to plow because last year was a waste of time but they called me, they offered me a sign on bonus and a good hourly rate so I thought about it and alright fine so pulled this out of the weeds this piston was leaking, put a new piston on, and I probably should have, not probably, I definitely should have replaced the two lines too, um, but I didn't, you know, because you don't want to sink too much into something that you don't think is the greatest deal, but it's all ready to go for the next snowstorm, but however, when that let go, um, I ratchet strapped the plow to the right, so I could finish out the night until the auto parts store opened up down the street. The ratchet strap broke, obviously. So I had to go home, drag the plow home, which is fine in the snowstorm, and get a chain. So I wrapped a chain around here, and then I put it through the only place. There's nowhere to really hook it on the side. That's, that's, not, that's from something else. Must have been a rock or something. This plow is years old. So I hooked the chain through this eyelet that is supposed to look like, supposed to look like that, you know, just to make it through the night. Um, I'm not, I don't understand how I'm guessing here that it must have yanked that through and then jammed it somehow. Um, and then when it tripped again, it jammed this, so... There's a steel plate that runs through that spring down to there. So, <clears throat> I'm going to have to, later on, not now, heat this, take this apart, heat this up and bend it back straight, and then maybe then I can get this, uh, this was one of those links that you can screw together, I mean, it just ripped the threads. But, it worked all night long, until the morning, and then that actually... That actually, well, it worked for two hours, I would say. And then that thing bent and let go and the chain popped off. And then, on my way home, a tree was falling as I was going and I hit the brakes and I just slid under it and it fell. It's bent this antenna all the way over. I actually managed to pull it back, I don't know. I don't know why it like popped back into its place. I don't know what it looks like in there. And then it stuffed this, it smashed this mirror there, scratched the, uh, scratched the pane off the door there, um, broke the vent shade, or not vent shade, uh, rain guard off. And then this back door broke this rain guard come across here broke this little body panel thing you know and blew out the mirror all right so after the mirror blew out 
I noticed that the grapple bucket slid forward. Luckily I had a, I have a little block of wood down there, so it actually isn't hitting the pump or anything. And the reason why the grapple bucket slid forward is because when the plow um, hose let go, I needed to ratchet strap it. So the only thing I had was a ratchet strap holding the grapple bucket at the back of the truck. And I put this in here for weight. So that slid forward. So now we're going to have to fire up the Takeuchi and get that thing out of there. All right, so I got the Takeuchi warming up. Check the oil out and everything and actually I checked the oil out before the storm so I wouldn't have to open up that uh back hatch while it's weighted with snow. Cuz it all fall it all falls down in there so that thing doesn't burn anything for oil anyways. All right, so whenever it snows out, you gotta clean these plates off if you don't have, if you're switching buckets. I left the bucket off on purpose so I could get that grapple bucket out of the um, back of the pickup. But like all of this here, you gotta make sure this is all cleaned off so you can properly grab the bucket. So it doesn't, you know, you don't have any accidents or anything. buckets in the air but or the arms the loader arms but you know do as I say not as I do thing Real quick, little tip. You see how I'm getting a little bit of the, the uh, it's not dirt, it's that recycled asphalt, 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 whatever. I can't speak right, so I can never say certain words. 
asphalt. My wife always gives me a hard time about it. Anyways, see how I'm getting a little bit of that? Well, what I do when I'm plowing, if it's stone or something, I'll put the pile where I know that there's a um, low spot. It's like this whole parking area, right? I, I know that there is a low spot here. So after this melts, I'll have a little pile of the asphalt um, right here. Look at, look at, he wants his ball. This is what I gotta deal with. It's a shepherd thing. Um, so when this melts, I'll have that there. If I push the snow into the woods, then I'm gonna have a whole bunch of asphalt in the woods. I'm just gonna call it asphalt. I don't care what anyone says. I'm trying to do this with one hand. I don't have a GoPro mount on this uh, machine yet. I'll let you see the bottom of this bucket too. See how flat that is? I am gonna do some uh, Oh, I'm going to do some wear pads, you know, later on, but this bucket, I mean, that's a new piece of steel. Look at how flat that is. You got the dog? Yeah. <laughs> do you like the snow? No. Do you like YouTube? No. <laughs>